In this video, I'd like to go over independent and dependent trials and using the multiplication rule. We're told that a bag contains 30 lollipops. We have 10 strawberry, 10 orange, 5 lemon lime, and 5 raspberries. We decide to take three lollipops out, and we're going to take them out one at a time, and we want to calculate the following probabilities. What's the probability that you select all strawberry? Now, remember, as we just saw in a previous video, the multiplication rule says, and let me switch over to my pen, the multiplication rule says if you have the probability of, let's say, an event B, and you want to know the probability of that occurring, and let's say another one, let's say C. It could be five events, it could be seven events, it could just be two. This is going to be equal to the probability of A times the probability of B times the probability of C. Now when we talk about independent, independent trials, what we're saying here is A happening, B happening, and C happening. If A happens, that's not going to affect the probability of B. If B happens, that's not going to affect the probability of C. That's what we mean by independent events, independent events, where the probability of one thing happening isn't going to affect the next. So every time you flip a coin, if you flip a coin and you get a tails, that's not going to affect the probability that you get a heads or a tails on your next flip. Each trial is independent. They are um, unperturbed by the previous trial. We also see this phrase, with replacement. When we talk about with replacement, we are associating that with independent trials. So I actually, when I taught in high school, I actually did an experiment like this, where we had 30 lollipops in a bag, and every student had to write down what flavor they wanted, and we went around the classroom. If we went around the classroom and we selected all these various um, lollipops with replacement, that means that first student who selects their lollipop, they're just going to look at it and they're going to put it back into the bag. That means when you have with replacement, that second person who selects the lollipop, their probabilities aren't affected by the first choice. And the reason why is because that person is looking at it and putting it back. So what I'm looking for here is, what's the probability that I get a strawberry and a strawberry on my second attempt and another strawberry on my third attempt? Well, keeping in mind here that when I select a strawberry, I'm looking at it for my first attempt and I'm putting it back. So the probability of selecting a strawberry on my first attempt, the probability of getting a strawberry on my first attempt, so one probability on the first attempt times the probability that I'm getting a strawberry on my second attempt times the probability that I get a strawberry on my third attempt. So looking right here, the probability that I get a strawberry on my first attempt, there are 10 strawberries out, a total, out of a total of 30 lollipops. Now let's say that occurs. Now we look at the second trial. Keeping in mind we have with replacement. So that means there are still 10 strawberry lollipops and there are still 30 lollipops in the bag because these are independent trials. We're doing this with replacement. We are replacing the ones we take out. And same thing with the third. So what I get here is I get, and I could write this with independent trials, this is something that we see frequently, 10 over 30 to the third power. That is a frequent way that we are going to see this. 10 over 30 raised to the, the third power here. We put that in our calculator. 10 divided by 30. We're going to raise that to the third power. Let's round this to the hundreds, or excuse me, the thousands place. We're going to get a probability of 0 0.037. That is the probability that we get three strawberries on three successive picks. And again, it's because we are putting we are selecting a strawberry and we're putting it back. Now, if we are selecting all strawberry, we want to know the probability of selecting all strawberry without replacement. Without replacement, this is going to be dependent. These trials or these events are going to be dependent. And the reason why, dependent, and the reason why is because when we take out that strawberry lollipop, 
for that second choice, there, is no, there are no longer 10 lollipops in there, at least with the flavor of strawberry. So what we want to do here is we want to calculate first that we select a strawberry. Right? Strawberry, first pick. Then, without putting that strawberry back, I want to calculate another strawberry with my second, given that strawberry was selected in my first. And that's how this is read. I want to know the probability that I select a strawberry with my second pick, given, this line means given, that I have already selected a strawberry with my first pick. And then finally, I want to select a prob the probability of getting a strawberry with my third choice, given that I had a prob or excuse me, given that I selected a strawberry for first and second choices. So let's go through this. I mean, and you write it like this, it looks very complicated, but it should make sense when we start, once we start putting in the values. The first choice, the probability of selecting a strawberry, there are 10 strawberry lollipops, and there are 30 lollipops total, just like how we started. Now this makes, this next step here is different than the previous problem because we are not putting that strawberry back. So now there are no longer 10 strawberries. There are no longer 10, there are now nine strawberry. So that means the probability of selecting a strawberry, now there are only nine, and there aren't 30 lollipops anymore. There are now 29. Now, for our third choice, we're selecting a, another one, all right? We're selecting another one. There are no longer, keeping in mind here, we already selected a strawberry first and second. So now there are not nine, there are now eight strawberries possible out of total of 28. This is going to give us our probability without replacement. These are dependent. The reason they're dependent is my second choice, my second observation here, my second um, selection of a lollipop, its probability has changed it is changed given the result of my first pick. I took a strawberry out. Now there are only nine out of 29. So let's calculate this. I have 10 times nine. I'm gonna, 10 times nine times eight. I'm gonna actually just multiply across the numerators here to get 720. And along the denominators, if I multiply 30 times 29 times 28, I get 24,000. 360. You're welcome to put this all in your calculator, but you might want to use parentheses, or you should use parentheses, because if you just do multiplication and division without parentheses, there's a good chance you're going to make a mistake, or your calculator will use the word of operations a little differently than you would suspect that you think it would. So now 720 divided by 24,360. I'm going to round this to the, well, I'm going to write this out a little bit, 0 0.0 two nine five five six six so forth so if I were to round this let's say to the thousands place here I would have point zero three zero the difference between these two examples with replacement means we have independent trials where the probabilities are not affected by the previous selection or the previous trial and with dependent, which is also without replacement, when we take out a strawberry, that's going to affect the probability for my second selection. Let's look at a few more examples using these numbers. Two more examples here using the lollipops. Still the same number of strawberry, orange, lemon, lime, and raspberries. What we want to do is to calculate first the probability of selecting a strawberry with your first pick, whoops, strawberry with the first pick, and then something else with your second pick, and this is without replacement. That's going to be a good first thing to consider. Is this independent or dependent? Without replacement, we're taking a lollipop out and we're not putting it back. That makes this dependent. That makes each successive selection dependent on the previous selection. So if I wanted to first calculate the probability of I want to have a strawberry first, and then and, then 
I want to know something else, so I'm going to write um, other, something other than strawberry, second. Now, this is going to be equal to, well, first we're going to find the probability of first selecting a strawberry. And this is just a comma, and this kind of looks a little weird here, but this is first. First, selecting a strawberry, and then we're going to multiply that times selecting something other than strawberry, second. Given that we've already selected a strawberry first. All right, so let's go through this step by step. We know we're going to be multiplying these two probabilities. What's going to make this slightly complicated and confusing is what's the probability of that second factor in our multiplication? So first, let's think about this. What's the probability of selecting a strawberry? Well, there's 10 out of 30. We've already seen that. There's 10 out of 30. So once I make that selection, and keep in mind, I am working now without replacement. So if you think about it, this is our first choice. Let's even let's go over here and write what's now left. There are now nine strawberry, ten orange, five lemon lime, and five raspberries. So what's the probability now working with these lollipops? What's the probability of selecting something other than strawberry, given that strawberry was selected first? This given that strawberry was selected first, that's indicating we're now using this these numerical values, 9, 10, 5, and 5. So it looks like we have, if we want to know how many lollipops are there other than strawberry, there's 10, 5, and 5. So if I add 10, 5, and 5, there are 20 lollipops in the bag that are not strawberry. Out of, now there are 29 total lollipops. The reason why is there is one less from the previous step. So now I'm going to multiply this. So I'll have in the numerator 10 times 20, which is 200. In the denominator, 30 times 29. This is 870. 870. So if I divide those, 200 divided by 870, you get approximately, let's write this out a little bit, 229, whoops, 229, 885, and then so forth. So if I were to round this, let's say, to the, the um, hundredths place here, this would be approximately 0.23. Quick summary, I knew it was without replacement. Those are dependent trials. Dependent trials indicate as we do our successive multiplication in our, our successive trials, the probability is going to change. In the previous problems, we had the numerator and the denominator changing. In this example, we just had the denominator change, and that was because it depends on what we're asked to find, and here we were looking at something other than strawberry. The last example, calculate the probability of selecting a raspberry, lemon lime, and orange lollipop in that order without replacement. This is a little bit easier, actually. We're going to calculate the probability that first we select a raspberry, so raspberry first, and then we're going to multiply that by then selecting a lemon lime, second, and then we're going to be multiplying that by an orange, third. What's great here is that this is with replacement. That means we don't have to worry about changing denominators and numerators from one selection to the next because we're looking at the lollipop and we're putting it back. So selecting a raspberry first, there are five possibilities out of 30 total, times the probability of selecting lemon lime, there are 5 out of 30. Again, the denominator is not changing because once I select that raspberry, I'm putting it back. So there are still 30 lollipops. And now orange, there are 10 possibilities to choose from out of 30. That's it. So now if I multiply the numerator there, all those numerators, I get 250. Divided by all those denominators, 30 times 30 times 30. I get 27,000, and when I simplify that, 250 divided by 27,000, I get, and I'm going to write this out a little bit, 0 0.009259. So we can round this to approximately 0 0.009. 
Again, this was with replacement, so I know as I continue this successive multiplication in these factors, the denominators aren't going to change in this lollipop example. The words without replacement and with replacement are going to indicate that. They're going to indicate whether or not the probabilities will change from one selection to the next.